ramping back up. Top quake of the last day struck the southern Atlantic. Luckily, very little to toss about down there. So let's go to the West Pacific, where an unassuming-looking low cell near Mariana is forming quickly into a typhoon. In infrared and mid-level water vapor, it's much easier to see the strength of the system just south of its central core. Hopefully, it takes a bend to the northeast as opposed to the northwest. Want to give a heads up from Italy and into the eastern bloc today? Some of these downpours are going to be tremendous. Flash flooding is highly likely in some of the regions here. It should reach Greece and Romania in about a day. And of course, in case anyone forgets or managed to miss it, after two record cold waves in October, another one is kicking in in the West here in early November. No part of them has been fun. Let's go next to space weather and its interaction with Earth. We've got two space weather technology stories today, and the first one deals with the telecommunications sector. Highly detailed studies revealing that there are marked decreases in sector output and performance during major geomagnetic storms. DST index tied primarily here, which is like the cousin of the KP index. Of course, the bigger sector, and one that can endanger lives if lost, is the power grid. We rely once again on the Asian studies, which are rapidly catching up to the Western ones, trying to be neck and neck, basically managing to wrap the three-phase study the Americans did over two years into one. Long story short, they found the greatest actor on the system not to be the X-ray flare energy or the particle bombardment, but the geomagnetically induced current. This is where the magnetic field of the planet turns from the protector to the effector, since its interaction with the solar wind is what's driving those induced currents. We are never more than one solar blast away from having every copper wire on Earth melt. So it might make sense to be able to predict major solar blasts. I want to go on record as siding with the sunspot magnetic classifications as the best current way to forecast flaring. But I also recognize that these sequence and pattern studies may one day reveal much, much more. They have shown promise, and we've got another baby step in the right direction here today. And we are off into space. Folks, we know that sneaking through the stars and dust of the Milky Way are rogue planets, perhaps more than there are stars in the system, those which have escaped or been ejected from their stellar systems. But what about in the extragalactic space, the vastly more enormous voids between the galaxies? In a new work in the Astrophysical Journal, we find the first confirmed detection of planet-sized objects in extragalactic space. These may have been ejected from a galactic stellar system, but that is unlikely. So we must ask where they got the stones to come together like that. Wink. Up next, for those who haven't heard the Planck data and cosmic microwave background are causing a bit of trouble for cosmologists, they are. They cannot seem to relieve the tension presented by these observations when compared to the model expectations or each other. A new work examines the potential of massive neutrinos to be the culprit, but in addition to the fact that we've never seen such neutral relics of these scientist imaginations, the math says it wouldn't work out anyway. And that takes up another option because whether it's the space surrounding a galaxy or the pre-universe universe or what lies beyond the known universe, the math is starting to say that Bose-Einstein condensates are not such a bad option for investigation. FYI, that would merely be an exotic form of normal luminous matter, not some new particle, and that would be wholly acceptable within the plasma electromagnetic paradigms. Last but not least, I figured this was going to be a negative paper when I read the title, something cutting against the use of ancient stories to interpret evidence and the story of Earth's catastrophic punctuations to these long periods of calm stability. But I was wrong. This is why you actually read the papers. The myths to which the paper refers are the same kind that we identify and attempt to tear down. Speculations and guesses go unquestioned. Future studies build upon those presumptions, turning them into unchallengeable myths. This is precisely what has happened to cosmology, climate change, and Earth's catastrophe cycle. Word for word, exactly the same trouble. Now, this paper was not discussing our specific topics, rather suggesting that similar myths abound for the early formation of the Earth and other planets like Mars and Venus. But indeed, this is what we're dealing with too, with on the topics we cover at the channel. All three have a dedicated movie to help you catch up. You can find them on our channel page, our website homepage, or at the links in the box right below the video. If you are new here, they are very recommended, almost needed to watch the daily shows.